Hi, Rob again, and uh, what we're going to do now is going to uh, have a look at the uh, some of the parameters that I want to, uh, or some of the activities that I want to do in this Ruga upgrade project <coughs> that I mentioned in the channel update. Um, first of all, I would like to um, drill a hole in the back of the receiver. Um, sounds pretty horrendous. Um, it seems to be quite uh, quite a well-known modification, though. Uh, it really does irritate me that I can't use a rod like this um, to clean from the breech right all the way through to the muzzle, not the other way around. And um, at the moment, there's really no way to do that without hurting, or at least feeling that you're risking um, damaging parts of the uh, breech. <coughs> and so uh, I intend to use this. This is a uh, cleaning rod actually for the um, uh, SIG 550 uh, I bought some time ago. <coughs> Uh, not the SIG 550 the cleaning rod, um, for the reason that uh, it's you don't have to screw anything together. This is a solid piece which is uh, covered in uh, PVC or nylon and which is uh, also has ball bearings in the handle and so you can push it through and it does a nice really nice job of cleaning the bore. <coughs> of course the Swiss Army kit um, has little short steel rods that you can uh, screw together. Um, that may be okay for an army gun, but I don't want to put steel rods through the bore of this. <clears throat> so I'm quite happy to have brass at the front and uh, plastic covering on the rod here. But you might be asking, <clears throat> using a sh uh, uh, an assault rifle cleaning rod for a small caliber um, rifle 22 LR. Well, let's just measure the diameter of the 22 LR round. Here's a mini mag, CCI mini mag. We're going to measure it, and there we go. And I get. <coughs> let's uh, see if you can zoom in and see that. I get uh, 5.66 millimeter diameter. There you go can just see it, I think, 5.66 millimeter. And so how does that relate to the size uh, of something that's in 5.56 um, NATO? <coughs> so let's have a look. Here I've got uh, some 5.56 NATO ammo on a strip. <coughs> I'm going to measure that. So here we are, coming up, open the jaws, close them just above the case, and what do you know? <coughs> 5.67, so 5.67 uh, millimetres, in other words only one hundredth of a millimetre larger than the 22LR. So it's not going to be an issue using the this cleaning rod for 22LR. And that's uh, really where I'm coming from with wanting to clean from the breech on the uh, Ruger. <coughs> so that's one of the, well that's going to be one of the first uh, activities. Um, the next one may well be, and I'm not, I haven't decided about this, whether to uh, radius the bolt at the back where it pushes the hammer down. <coughs> Those of you who know the, uh, the mechanism of the uh, Ruger uh, trigger mechanism with the hammer, know that the bolt comes back, pushes the hammer down to reset it, to reset the trigger. And then, of course, you can pull the trigger again, the hammer goes forward, uh, on the bolt which has been sent forward. <coughs> the bolt is sent, sent back by the gas in the uh, or the recoil of the uh, um, cartridge, 2 to LR cartridge. Uh, 
So I may radius the bolt, I'm not too sure about that. Or I'm considering I might buy an aftermarket bolt because then the breech um, and the spacing will be correct. The, uh, it'll be nicely uh, squared off and everything. And that's probably going to be a nicer uh, finish than the uh, stock Ruger bolt. <coughs> I'm going to polish the uh, receiver contact surfaces inside, uh, surfaces inside here uh, where the bolt slides to and fro because it's quite rough. <coughs> there are a lot of machining marks made there and I just like to get a smoother movement of the bolt. Um, I don't really need it because I don't shoot any low power ammo. Uh, the mini mag is about the lowest, um, uh, well let's say it's about the standard ammo that I use. So, um, and that's quite a powerful little round so uh, I don't really need to shoot low, to polish it to make sure that it has freedom of movement for low power ammo but I'm, uh, I think I'll do that just for the sake of knowing it's smooth. And of course the charger slides along the, that part of the charging handle where it fits to the bolt slides along the receiver too so I'll polish that. Um, <clears throat> One change I've already made, uh, it came yesterday. Um, this is the old bipod that used to be on there. This is a Shooter's Ridge bipod. And um, I bought it at the time where I didn't really know very much. Um, this is a bench rest bipod. And so <clears throat> it's, I think it's six to nine inches. And you can see that's pretty tiny. Um, I've never ever been able to use it in this position because in Switzerland we don't do bench rest. Um, but at the, like I say at the time I didn't know better. Um, I always have to use it fully extended and sometimes I find that's not enough. So I've decided to splash out <coughs> on another bipod. Um, and this one is uh, British made. It's a an aluminium, it's actually quite light. It's an aluminium one and it's made by Sniper Systems. Um, then I think they're not very well known. Um, perhaps I can tell a little bit what I read at least on their website about the uh, history. Um, the uh, troops in Afghanistan were having to shoot above tall grass above poppies and various other stuff. And they didn't have um, a, a suitable bipod to be able to do that. And so um, I think uh, if it was, uh, I don't know, an urgent operational requirement as they are called, UORs, or if it was just uh, something that this, some guy decided to do for his mate, I don't know how it worked. But um, anyway, they made a, uh, the next model up I think it's uh, 16 to 23 or something like that, 16 to 26 uh, inch bipod to be able to shoot over this higher grass. <coughs> and uh, apparently that uh, had such a good echo that they decided to make a whole range. And so now this one that's fitted has all the features <coughs> um, that you would, you would really want. It has uh, something that looks like a podlock so the swivel effect um, you can fit, fix this in position um, I don't know if this is a, the same as a podlock feature but you can actually move it round so it's not standing in the way um, the legs themselves pop out proactively like that <clears throat> and are notched um, which is a great feature because uh, usually you don't have especially if you're in the army, you don't have very much time uh, if you've decided you need to shoot, then you don't have much time to fiddle around with your bipod. You want those feet out already uh, to deploy as quickly as possible and at the right height. Um, to, fit, to adjust them to the right height, you just need to press this little uh, uh, lever in here and then you can just push them until they're the, the right level. So like that, and they are self-locking at these um, at these distances. <coughs> um, 
The other thing is it has a nice thumb wheel here to attach it to your sling swivel um, mounting point. Yeah, I think uh, those are the, the main significant uh, points here. So it's, it's basically it's, uh, a standard uh, Harris-like um, system at a rather better price and I think a bit lighter because this is aluminium and, uh, and not steel. <coughs> uh, but with all of the com convenience that you would really want, um, especially the swivel, the locking part of the swivel and the easy quick attach attachment. Um, one of the things I find very annoying about the let's put that down. One of the things I find very annoying about this is that the uh, little claws keep disappearing through the hole. I don't know if you can see that. So this is where the little claws should be coming out. And um, every single time, uh, I've only got half of one out now, every single time they fall through, now oh, there we are, can you see that? So every single time these things fall through this hole, oh no, it's still not correct. There we are, that's correct now. So every single time they fall through the hole, these things, <coughs> And uh, then you have to fiddle about, as you just saw me do, to uh, get them to uh, come out and be ready to deploy, ready to attach. Um, it's okay if you leave them all the time on the uh, rifle, but if you need to take it off and put it on and take it off and put it on, then it's a real pain in the butt. Um, I don't have that problem with the one from Sniper Systems. The Sniper Systems, eat, somehow, they've solved that and the uh, little claws stay out, ready for deployment. So that's uh, a positive thing. As you can see here, we're on the uh, maximum height now, 16 inch. Um, so 16 to 9, this is really a very, very nice uh, stable uh, base. And as you can see, I can just change the height of the legs just like this. <coughs> that's that one, and that's the other one. I can get them to lock in by pushing down on the rifle like that. And that has compressed the spring that will help them deploy just like that. So they are very fast deploying uh, legs. And I must say I'm very pleased with this. And this is the second one of these sniper systems bipods I've bought now. Um, like I say, this um, podlock style lever is uh, already fitted, it's not an optional accessory. Um, the nice thumb wheel is uh, easy to deploy, that's here. <coughs> uh, you have, if you want to uh, put a sling on it, you have a, another point uh, underneath to put that sling. Uh, it protects the uh, stock by having a layer of um, rubber or plastic, I don't know what, um, to uh, uh, to do just that, to protect the wood or the uh, whatever your stock is made of. <coughs> um, you can count it as you wish, as you see, and um, so that's I think is a is a very nice piece of kit, very easy to use, and they've solved a lot of the annoying um, ergonomic factors that just a, a regular cheap. Um, bipod would give you, or even I think um, they say they've improved on something like up to 40 aspects of the old Harris design. So um, uh, sometimes they're very subtle, it's probably just down to deburring something that otherwise could cut you. Um, <clears throat> sometimes it's uh, little things like making sure those little claws uh, never get lost so that they're always available for you to put onto the um, put onto the uh, sling swivel stud. Yeah, <coughs> like that. So um, that's something that I'm quite uh, pleased about. Um, something else I'll be doing is uh, uh, I'll show you how I 
what my thoughts behind changing the rings on this scope are. You can see they're kind of medium height at the moment. Um, and I have an overlong, I don't know if you can see that, let's zoom in a bit. I have an overlong <coughs> rail here by, <coughs> you can see that there, the overlong rail <coughs> is here. And that actually is now a bit of a uh, hindrance to my lowering the scope because sooner or later it will bind on here. So um, I'm solving that. This is a is a nice rail. It's a, it's a little bit high, but it's a nice rail from EGW. Um, it's a zero MOA rail. <coughs> so of course, um, with 22 LR, you will need to uh, do more um, or gain more altitude with your uh, uh, shot as if you want to go out in range. <coughs> and so I've combined those two facts. Uh, the fact that it's over long and uh, uh, doesn't allow me to uh, really use a longer range. Um, and so I've gone for a tactical so solutions scope rail which is the same length as the receiver and not longer and is a 15 MOA. Uh, has a 15 MOA slope so that I can get those uh, 15 MOA is about 5 uh, mils uh, more or less <coughs> for a bit so uh, I can use an extra 4 mils on the scope um, by zeroing it a little bit higher so I get more adjustment lower um, yeah it's not it's not a a battle rifle that's nothing I use for uh, life or death situations but it's nice to be able to shoot that little bit further knowing uh, that your scope can then handle it. Um, sooner or later um, I will want to change the scope because this is a uh, no-name um, uh, really a, an awful <laughs> it's about I think probably the worst, one of the worst scopes out there. It doesn't hold zero. It doesn't um, uh, keep the settings. Or if you if you want to uh, um, uh, set a uh, turret so it doesn't move, then it will actually move the adjustment that you put on there. It's uh, just a piece of, you know what. So <clears throat> I'm going to get rid of it. Um, <laughs> probably can't even sell it with a good conscience um, but anyway I will I will get a better scope <coughs> but one of the the big things I want to do is actually lower uh, this and get it as close to the barrel without touching as possible and so uh, I've gone through some calculations uh, and I want to show you how I did those calculations just to make sure that I've got the right height rings the rings aren't here yet <coughs> I ordered them from uh, a well-known place in, or a well-known store in Germany, but they are on back order. So as soon as they come, I'll show you uh, fit, fitting those. Um, <coughs> a trigger job is in order, and I'm doing it the, the easy way. I'm going to fit uh, a Ruger BX trigger. Uh, that's already here. Um, it, I've compared it. I think this is about two and a half pounds using my ad hoc homemade trigger pull me measure and this is around four and a bit or four pounds <clears throat> maybe a bit more using my homemade uh, measure. Um, sooner or later uh, we can have a look at doing that. Um, you've seen me in, one, in quite an old video now my doing an auto bolt, bolt release and um, so I will fit that also. I must dig it out of the uh, little box it's in at the moment. <coughs> I'll be uh, measuring the trigger pool. I might even dry lube um, some internal parts with Teflon. Uh, it's a bit of a an idea I've, I've got going. Uh, I use Teflon anyway on bicycles and um, motorcycle um, for some uh, lubrication tasks. 
and I think they might it might work well also on the uh, uh, on certain parts. I haven't quite decided if I'm going to use it on the trigger group or not, um, but uh, on some parts uh, I think I might use dry loop Teflon uh, to cut down some friction. <coughs> um, if I lower the scope by getting rings which are only a quarter of an inch high uh, instead of the, what is this, about 11 millimeters. <coughs> um, so it's going to be uh, six millimeters instead or about half as high here. This is why I need to get rid of this part. Um, then I may, whoops, I may need to remove some padding here in the cheek weld. Um, I think the uh, the scope will come to about the same point, <coughs> um, but I may I may need to adjust the cheek weld, um, so take out some foam padding from here. Um, I'll do some accuracy testing, um, so take you down to the uh, 50 meter range, um, at, which is what I'm currently doing, and then <coughs> I have another. Uh, idea and that is this is my um, gunsmithing box of gunsmithing tools. I've got another new toy <coughs> uh, which arrived this month and that is this Wheeler Digital. Let's turn it on. There we go. This Wheeler Digital. Uh, torque uh, screwdriver essentially a torque wrench. <coughs> um, what I've been hearing is that uh, according to different pressures on the takedown screw of the Ruger um, so the rifle performs more or less accurately and that's intriguing me and I want to find out what is the sweet spot in torque to be applied to the takedown screw to get the best results. So I'll be stepping up, I'll be starting as low as this thing will measure, um, <clears throat> and then going up in five foot pound increments uh, to find the point at which the torque screw uh, op delivers optimum results and um, may document the Part, the part after that where the results diverge again or the groups diverge again. So um, uh, that's uh, something else which is planned. Um, <laughs> I need enough uh, weekends with bad weather where I'm not going mm, mountain biking or motorcycling uh, and can be uh, down here in my dungeon <coughs> uh, doing that. But uh, like I say, I think that's more or less all of the changes I want to do to the Ruger. Um, not all of them cost money. Um, some of the bits I already have. Like I say, the rings will be coming. <coughs> um, but the first thing I will be doing is uh, going on to move to the uh, drilling a hole in the rear of the receiver. So I can clean it properly. Because... Uh, Having a clean bore um, is, uh, is another factor for having repeatable results, or at least fouling it regularly uh, to the same degree so that you know uh, what to expect. <coughs> Repeatability is what it's all about. So I think, uh, having said that, that's probably um, the end of this little uh, overview of the Ruger project. and. Uh, I think the next step will be to get on with something um, like marking out, measuring and marking the uh, hole to drill in the rear of the receiver. So I'll see you later on in the next part, the hole in the receiver. See you then. Bye.